Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm late. Good morning, everyone. All right. I haven't been putting them up oh, okay. for weeks. Okay. Oh, no? Yeah. So, I mean, then that's I, I've kind of stopped, oh. honestly. Oh, okay. it, I, I could turn I off recording, yeah. but. Yeah. Okay, I'm just saying. But it, oh, okay. it, 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 it's a lot of work and it's yeah, a pain in the ass. I know. And, I know. Yeah. And I was like, you know, this is. Right, and, it's, and I could get in trouble for it, ultimately. Well, all right, everybody, looking at picking practice today. It's supposed to be for the first 15 minutes, but really, you know what? I'm only going to do this for like five or six minutes because because I was so late coming in today and it was my fault. Uh, and I don't want to eat up your playing time because um, I came in late. All right, so. Um, That's my girl. That's the one you see at the top there, right? So right at the top, just to go over it one more time. Uh, each dotted line is a string, represents a string, and each number represents a fret, unless of course it's a zero, which means you just hit that string without pressing on any frets at all. So what this is saying here is you hit the G string and then the C string twice. Forget those threes for now. I know that's a little confusing, but forget them for now because they're not important. So you hit the G string open and then the C string twice. So that's the fourth string and then the third string. And you do that four times. And the second half of the riff is the C string open. Then there's a two, right? So you see a zero, that means you hit the C string open. Then you see a two, that means you, you play the second fret. Then open on the E string, third fret, open, third fret. So all together, that sounds like this. Like that. Okie dokie. Up next, uh, we'll very briefly go over Brown Eyed Girl. Now, this is a little trickier because you've got two numbers stacked on top of each other. Also, it only shows two strings because you don't use any of the other strings. It uses, it shows the A string and the E string, which is this string, the very first one on the bottom, and then the second one, which is the E string. So when you're playing these together, you're plucking both of these strings at the same time. Now I have nails, which makes it a little easier. Uh, you could also strum them both down like this. You hear that's essentially the same sound as this. So two on the A string, three on the E string, right? So 
So my first finger will go on the second fret of the first string, which is the A string. And my second finger will go on the third fret of the E string. So two and three. Then it goes to three and five. So my first finger is the one that's on the A string, right? So we're gonna move that first finger to three and then that second finger to five. Now, if that's too much of a stretch for you, you can use your third finger for the fifth fret on the E string. But you should be able to, on a, even up to a tenor, I think it's not that crazy of a stretch. Okay, almost out of time. Uh, then five, seven. Then back to three, five. And back to two, three. So that whole first bar, which is a bar is the G with the three dots after it. That's a full bar. So that measure or bar is like this. Otherwise, really played in real time like this. Now we move on to where the C is. So that's seven, eight, eight, ten, ten, twelve, eight, ten, seven, eight, like so. Then one more time with the G measure, which is two, three, three, five, five, seven back to three, five, and back to two, three. Then for the D measure, it's an open string on the A string and the second fret on the E string. Then two, three on the E string and open on the A string to end it. So the whole thing slowly is That's it. Does anybody want to try that? Anybody? I'm asking politely now, but all right, Vicky. That was it. That was it. It was, you probably couldn't hear it at all because it was very quiet, but she played it perfectly. Let's, yeah, Vicky, that was awesome. Good job. Oh, people are learning in my class. <laughs> That's such a good feeling. <laughs> I, oh, oh, sorry. People are learning in my class. <laughs> That's better. I, I'll be honest with you, it always blows me away. And I have some students that have gotten, uh, particularly younger kids, and one kid in particular, she came in to me and her father told me, um, you know, she has a learning disability. So you're going to have to go over stuff a lot and you're going to have to be super patient because she doesn't get stuff right away but she's like desperate to play guitar now luckily for whatever reason when i'm teaching a musical instrument or a musical concept i have like infinite patience it's just one of those things that I, nothing bothers me nothing upsets me you haven't practiced whatever it's your problem not mine you know like or even even if they have to ask something a hundred times it's fine you know if it, if it hasn't because i learned music and there are concepts along the way that take a long time to, to like sink in and to really start making sense. So I understand that. So I've always been very patient. So she found the right teacher, man. And I'll tell you what, this was five years ago. She started her own band. She's, yeah, yeah. She's, she's playing, what was that, Carlissa? Yes. I thought you said something. No, I did. I said, that's great. That's oh, fantastic. 
Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm so proud of her. You know, and, I want to get to that point. I want to get to that point. <laughs> you will, you will, if you just keep working on it and you keep practicing. You know, and when you're not in this class, YouTube is your friend. But there's a absolutely. But there's a caveat with that. Don't just type in what you're trying to learn and then like click the first video, see that it sucks and give up, right? Because there are hundreds upon hundreds into the thousands of videos on single subjects, right? I like, know. Yeah, and that A can be overwhelming, but B, use it to your advantage. Try the next guy, right? Try the guy after right. that. Somebody eventually is going to explain something and say a certain thing or spin it in a certain way that really, really makes sense to you. Right. I try to say it in as many different ways as possible for that reason. Right. But you can't always, you know, uh, say the exact right thing on YouTube. You have, you know, millions of people trying to explain uh, this, the same subject and someone might really make it click for you or you might find a teacher that you really love. You know, so so explore, try different things in the little sidebar. Yeah, good, mm -hmm. good. I'm glad to hear that. Good. Oh, yeah, definitely. In the little sidebar to the right, there's uh, the suggested videos. And if you're looking up a lot of ukulele stuff, use those suggested videos. The algorithm on YouTube is really, really good at finding stuff that you're going to enjoy. I don't know how it does it probably reads your mind, something to that effect, but you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it works really, really well. That algorithm is really, really, it's almost scary. I swear. I think that I want to get something and it shows up on my internet. I swear. Like I, I, you know, man, it would be really cool if I got a bike, eh, whatever. And then bike ads started coming up everywhere. I look, you know, I never typed it into anything, never searched it. Anyhow, whatever. All right, so that's it for the. Alexa. Thank you, thank you. Alexa's a little spy. I unplugged that thing, man. Alexa's a little spy. I was, I, I became convinced of that. That's not a conspiracy theory. All right, so uh, before we uh, start with the singing, um, we had something that was brought up. Which I just looked, I just looked through the the years of the songs. Thank God, uh, Herb, you have the years as well. The latest songs are in the seventies, man. The latest song that we have is nineteen seventy nine. So was the person who talked to you like three hundred years old? Somebody, somebody said that the uh, if you don't mind, Herb, somebody said that uh, when we played the last show at Stonebridge that the songs were too new and that they, they didn't know any of the songs. But I just looked through it. it. The vast majority of them are in the 60s. We literally have one song from the 1700s in here. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't feel like they're that. What era would be preferable? Like, do, do we need to do songs from the 20s and 30s? And I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. Um, do you think that would work better? Or what, what are you thinking? Stonebridge or Bridge? Bridgewater. Oh, Bridgewater. Oh, last time at Bridgewater. That wasn't 100 years old. And said the songs were too new. They probably like the old songs. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, the next show we're playing is a centenarian thing, so... Thing. Okay, I'll see you in my dreams, 1924. Right. Dream a little dream. That's fantastic. What is that, 1931? Yeah, All right. As as got, so. Yeah, those songs are both hard. And actually, you know, the further back you go, in some cases, the more chords they use. I don't know what happened, but as you start going from... They're piano songs. That's exactly right. And when you translate piano songs to a stringed instrument, 
it's not not always the easiest thing in the world because for them going from a B minor seven slash nine to a B minor third fifth that you know whatever is just moving two fingers right for us it could be going from like you, you know it's 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 much harder it's much harder um, as, and somehow as time went along and and the, absolutely as guitar became more popular you started seeing like all songs that are g c d you know the super easy guitar chords and ukulele chords so then then the idea is um let's stick with older stuff then let's go with like uh 30s 40s and like latest 50s i guess yeah right i mean if you're a hundred, you should you should have should have heard some of that stuff, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense, you know. And I don't think we really took into account that we were playing for like the last time we did it, you know. I think we just sort of did like a set list that we knew, you know, the songs that we knew best. So what we need to do is pull together as many songs from from the time between I like I said between 1920 on up. Obviously, anything like Amazing Grace, which was written in the 1700s, should be allowed. <laughs> um, and uh, I think that should be good if we can limit it to that and well-known songs from those eras. You know, like if I know the songs from those time periods, everybody does. <laughs> you know. So we can't we can't use the same set list. Well, that's the, that that becomes a right. Well, we could do the Stonebridge set list the second show if we wanted to the show here. is earlier oh oh may 6 is here and then we have the cent gotcha well we could do the 40s 50s and 20 and right right that's not that's so we think you 1980s, 50 years ago, we started from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and ends on the 60s. You'll recognize that music, I guarantee. Okay. If we go further into the 70s or the early 60s, not the late 60s, into the 20s, I mean, that means they were, I don't know, I would, I would suggest, just a suggestion. Yeah, yeah. 30s, maybe 30s, 40s, 50s, early 60s. That's a good mirror of time between she and the song. Okay. That, that's fine by me. Golden oldies. That's a good word to use. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah. And we want we want upbeat stuff, and we want stuff that'll make. I mean, you know, um, that'll make people happy. You know. Uh, in in the in, listen in our songbook we have enough I promise you there's enough from those from those eras in there that we could build a very decent set list. So what I'll do, or maybe Vicky and I can do, is is kind of comb through and see if we could find some that are not only within the era of the '40s to the early '60s, '30s to the early '60s, late '30s to the early '60s. '40s, '50s, and early '60s. Okay. Like John Denver and stuff like that, and I don't think people might know that. Yeah, we we actually play uh, played a few John Denver songs, if I remember correctly, the last time, and that is like 79, 78. So that might have thrown people a little bit. And if I remember correctly, I think we even did Sweet Dreams, which is uh, the Eurythmics from like nineteen eighty five. Yeah, we did for sure. I remember that. So yeah, we weren't thinking, Vicky. What what what? What was going on, man? Did you said we were supposed to think? I, well, that's the problem. Nobody told me to think. <laughs> uh, Chris, just a quick comment. Uh, 
you had the millennial thinking. <laughs> John attended, exactly right. I, I have attended some of the Bridgewater seniors' uh, performance. Yes. Uh, I think a lot of the uh, songs from the Motown and the uh, Soul Train, uh, yes. we can consider because they, they are really very popular back in the 60s and 70s. Actually, he has a very good point because I also remember a few moments when we were playing Motown, like Sugar Pie Honey Bunch, and everybody was singing along. Everybody was singing along. Yeah. So that, but that's a little later into the 60s, I believe. Yeah, but don't forget there's some older, old, 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 so you were born like 10 years before it happened. So that makes sense. No, no I, I heard those songs growing up. Right. You know, I heard those songs. Right, but a lot of the people who are but going- There's really no more of those other 50s songs, like songs from the 50s. Yeah. Was, a lot of those people are gone already. <laughs> well, the I mean, people who played the music are gone, but the people who love the music could still possibly you know, be in Bridgewater. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the new oldies are from the 60s and 70s. Not the 50s and 40s. Right. You know, like songs from the 40s. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so we might shift it over to the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Yeah, I think 30s, 30s and 40s might be a little bit too old. Okay. Because that was like pre war and during the war. Um, most people in there. Well, yeah, but but way the thing about the, is that they just that they just pointed out is it's a, a cent, cent, centennial fest, uh, uh, and and uh, that means that some of the people there could, could be as old as one hundred years old. Oh, okay, okay. So exactly. Yeah. So so you know the thirties. I don't think is that outside of the they they probably liked these songs. You know. That's true. That's true yeah. Late yeah, later yeah, because it helps them. You know what? They help. It helps them to engage with us and sing along, and they right. like that. Right, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Exactly. Um, but I will say this again. I don't. I don't know if you heard what we were saying that um, we should include some Motown songs. Which yeah. be, Motown that are early sixties. It may even be a little later in the sixties. Right up to nineteen sixty-six. I guess. You know, and of yeah. I don't know, man. That might be. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, they love that one. They love that one. I love that one. Mm -hmm. I I love all Motown songs. <laughs> I love all Motown songs too. I I agree. Uh, Neil, what's his name? Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. I don't Diamond. know. I don't know, Mr. Diamond. I don't know about your. Oh no, I think they'll love it. They, 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 they will like love that. it. I know they love it. Everybody loves that friggin' song. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say friggin'. I'll never say friggin' again. <laughs> I want to ask one question about the gig books. Yes. Sir, uh, I'm, I'm, I want to print up the gig books because Marilyn is our like printer person. I can't, we can't print, I don't know how many pages, how many, it was 100. Oh. The gig book, part one, part two. Is there 200 songs in that? There's 300 songs in our book. Oh, 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 oh. No, I'm talking about the gig book. What's a gig book? It's a gig book. <laughs> I'm sorry. Gig book. The, just so, so like print out every time we no, do a gig? Well, I, no, no. The gig book, there's, there's, there's like 50 songs. There's 50 songs so. in the gig book. Oh, so the songs that we pick from to make the gig? Set list. No, we actually have the gig book. The gig book one. To me, that's a gig okay, book. so why is it called the gig book? Uh, her, <laughs> I call it the gig book. Gig book one and gig book two. <laughs> There's song book one and song book. I did have a song book with a pipeline. I did a song Oh, right. The 50 songs. I 
can uh, I'm way over your I'm way over. Okay, so the book itself is fine. Okay. Yep. All right. I think we left off on 191. Look at me go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that'll work. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna. Okay, all right, that sounds good. Right, yeah, and and we sort of pulled the best ones. That works for me. That gives us that gives us a little bit of time and a little bit of extra stuff to play. And yes, all right, we'll make it happen. We always make it happen. We'll have a good show. I'm not worried. All right. No, it's fine. Interrupt all day. Whatever. Can everyone hear the amp? Okay. Um, Daniel by Elton John. One, two, one, two, three, four.
sorry, Ma, I would again I should have told you that. Oh was... no, that's alright. I just thought I'd tell you That's that's a great song, man. It's really sad. You know, really sad. But the way that he the, just the lines, it looks like Daniel must be the clouds in my eyes is such a great way. It kind of says like, cause he's crying, you know, and he's uh, you know, like, it's just, it's so good. It is very much so. The one line that I always- use, I, use, I, yes, used to sing this song when, I used to sing this song a lot when I was a teenager. Oh, oh really? I, I love the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I were sang you, a lot of this song. Yeah. Were, you, were you a depressed teenager way? Did you need, did you need a hug? <laughs> yes, I, <did. laughs> I get it i get it i love sad music man i'll sit there and just like cry for an hour or so and you know get it out of my system and then go about my day while listening to sad songs i might add um just so you don't think i'm just huddled in a ball crying yes Oh, like that? I guess on a, on a, so that's a D minor chord. So the way you would play it is to put your pinky down on the second string, third fret, then pick it up. Then pick up your first finger, then put it back down. Those three notes fit very well within the scale. So, so, right? Um, and he, oh, when I go up the neck, I'm going from F to G on my ukulele because this is an F shape on mine, right? It's the same as a B flat and a G is just two frets up so rather than switch to the you know the the other g it just makes sense for me to slide up two frets instead so if you ever see me going up the neck that's probably what i'm doing unless i'm being show off here i'm bored with it you got it all right marcia hello yes Isn't that just once? Uh, where is the F minor? No, it's hit. It's hit, it's strummed for four, just like. Oh, I miss Daniel. Oh. Oh, so your eyes have died. Will you see? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, you, you really can kind of do either one. I guess on the actual record itself, I think there is a hang there, you know? All right, moving on. Oh God, I love this song too much too. Maybe, maybe. This song is really guitar centric, unfortunately. So, and I can't even play it on this cause I need the, no, no, no. I mean, this is closely tuned to a guitar, but anyway, whatever. All right, so let's take a look at the chords really quickly. G, E minor seventh, which is also a G something. C, D, A minor, and yeah, G six. 
And, and here they call it E minor seventh. Again, one of those little nuances with music that makes it annoying is you could take the four notes and call them a bunch of different stuff, depending on what note you want to make the root note or the most important note of that chord, right? Also, depending on the context, which means what chords come after it and what chords come before it, that could change what you want to call that chord because this is going to sound nuts that chord could function as a different chord depending on what it's next to that's where it gets really music theory -y yeah. and too crazy and a little weird but that's why every now and then you'll see the exact same chord shape that you knew was a g6 a week ago is now called an e minor seventh why <laughs> right so here we go we'll try the intro one, two, one, two, do, do, do. Yeah. 
the last part is complicated. And, and, and somewhere by the A and the E, my, I don't know the song, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure. I was sure. trying to follow you, but I didn't. That's okay. Um, David. Yes. How would you like to do Cupid? Oh, I'm very proud of you. Of course you did. <laughs> Sam Cook. While I love how you do it, I was I'm just like completely unfamiliar with this catalog. All right. Oh, looks like uh, my drivers need updating. Now everybody knows. Okay. Dave's going to lead this one. Um, hopefully you'll be able to hear me playing it and maybe hear his voice. I, I don't know. All right. I, th I think you guys repeated the chorus twice. Yeah, yeah, because then we jumped. We... Yeah, but only only once. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I, I... That's right. I love it so much. It's a great song. That is a great song. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Oh, 
Oh, really? Yeah. You know, I, I um, wanted to share something that I was thinking while I was playing that song. Turns out that when I'm playing, I could think pretty deeply if I'm not singing. Um, what I've learned over the years with music, one of the biggest and most important revelations I think I ever had was that any note can go with any other note or any chord, period. There's, you know, people think, you know, the song's in the key of C major, so you have to play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Not really. You could play any note. Now, it'll sound weird <laughs> sometimes, um, but sometimes you'll get something really interesting out of it. So even if I were to play, say, this G chord for me, and then move around one of the notes inside the G chord, right? So let's try this. That sounds good. Yeah, it's basically Dear Prudence. Now let's try going up. Wow. That's really cool. Then here. Also works here. See, you get some of these, but in some contexts, that might sound awesome. You know, like what if a bad guy walks in during a movie <laughs> or a Western? Yeah, you know, how about this? That sounds kind of cool. And I'm doing what's called cr a chromatic scale. A chromatic scale is going up one note at a time directly through. So C, uh, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, just going up one note at a time and still playing the same G chord. Wow. So at some point I realized that it's almost impossible to make a mistake as long as you pretend like you did it on purpose. I, th I think that's the moral of the story. Jazz, the entire genre of jazz was created under that same exact, um, there are no mistakes, it's impossible. It's, and, and it was basically created under what I'm, I'm saying right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, oh, it's 200? Okay, I, I, I was gonna get it somewhere else, but. Uh, hold on, man. I got to scroll. Long way to go. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please look up at the screen. And we're singing this for Elise. Elise, come here a minute. We'll do the top one, the very top one. Hopefully you singers know it already. I know. <laughs> Which one is this that we're doing? Um, and one, two, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I think. Yeah, I couldn't get it right away either. Uh, with that, thank you, everybody online. Debbie, thank you, Anne. Thank you, Carlissa. Thank you, and thank you, May. Thank you, teacher. Bye, thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Chris, for the tips. You got it. Anytime, Carlissa. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye bye.